In this video, I'm going to give you four holistic tools based on the subatomic reality of life that will help you cope with the death of someone you love. These are the four tools that I wished I'd had when death nearly destroyed my life. Because when someone you love dies, you get an ice cold injection of reality. You begin to see just how far modern life has taken us away from the fundamental realities of the human experience. Very quickly you begin to see just how little our modern civilization knows about death and if you don't understand death you can't ever really live. Like my parents, when I was young, I believed that the police were public servants, that the doctors always knew best, that the government and their scientists had our best interests at heart. I believed that our civilization had all the answers. I was an idiot. They didn't even have the right questions. So here's rule number one, embrace your grief. And here's something that the doctors won't tell you. Grief is not something that can be or should be fixed because death is the lion that stalks us all. Most people live like zebras. They don't want to look back at the dead. You've seen the nature programs. The lion attacks, the herd runs. As soon as the lion makes a kill, the rest of the herd just stop put their head down and start eating grass as though nothing's happened. The world wants you to go back to eating grass. The truth is, our grief makes other people feel uncomfortable because it reminds them of a reality they do their best to ignore. People will try to convince you to move on, be positive, take your mind off of it, don't think about it. Doctors will try to drug your grief away as though it was some kind of mental defect. They'll tell you about the five stages of grief as though life was some kind of Xbox game. Defeat the, the last boss and just go back to being a zebra. And here's the thing. Not only have those psychological models been thoroughly debunked, but you're more than that. You're not a dysfunctional machine. Be proud of your grief. Find dignity in your sorrow. It's what makes you truly alive. Your capacity for grief is a measure of your capacity for love. And here's rule number two. I call it the Dawkins delusion. Everyone that's alive today has been brainwashed to believe that life is an accident. Dawkins insists that Life is inherently devoid of any meaning and consciousness itself is an illusion caused by the chemicals in your brain. What killed me when my mother died that was if life is meaningless, so was her death. Well here's the thing I wish I'd known. The QM4YS system demonstrates that every moment of your life is sacred and that everyone you have ever met or will ever meet is of infinite importance to your life. For example, how many times have you thought of someone and they've telephoned you or emailed you? How many times have you started a sentence and your loved one has said, I was just going to say that? We all know that we are connected to the people that we love in ways that we just don't understand. When they go, we're left disorientated. It's almost as though a wind that supported us has suddenly disappeared. And indeed it has. We are left flat on our face in the mud. Give yourself permission to be disorientated. Never stop talking to the departed. Include them in your life because the truth is they've never really left. And that brings us to rule number three. Never make it about you. 
If you find yourself focusing on anything other than the person that you lost, the chances are you're seeing this death only in so far as it affects you, only within the context of what you've lost. And I can tell you from painful experience that it really will destroy you because denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, these are not five stages of grief as Kubler-Ross insisted in 1969. They are not the, the five stages that the mind goes through sequentially until normalcy returns, whatever normalcy is. The truth is these are emotions that emerge out of the depth of your past, how you feel about that past and your expectations for the future. When Kubler-Ross tried to fit the human soul into her five little boxes. She just left out too much. Living beings are so much more complicated and so much more magnificent than that. So please, don't let your grief blind you to the fact that it's still a beautiful world. Treasure every moment. Tool number four, turn death into your teacher because death is the ultimate red pill. You've been given an invaluable lesson. You've seen just how fleeting our life is and how vitally important even the most trivial of conversations. Now you have a choice. You could take the blue pill and rejoin the herd and just go back to eating grass, waiting for the lion of death to come for you or you could turn death into your teacher and make death teach you how to live. Don't find yourself one day in the future regretting yet again all of the things you didn't do, all of the things you didn't say. The disorientation that we feel when we lose someone we love is not an emotional inconvenience that can be corrected with drugs, it is a physical and spiritual reality. Turn the pain that you feel at your loss into a positive intention to be truly present in every moment in the life that you have left to live. Don't live your life lost within the fantasy of your idea of yourself. Embrace the world around you as the incredible gift that it is. If you're suffering right now, click on the link below and download a free copy of our workbook, How to Overcome Automatic Negative Thoughts and Emotions. It will give you the tools you need to manage your own inner life. And remember, you're not alone. We send our love and best wishes to you and your family as you go through the hardest challenge that life presents us all.